Hello friends, my name is Dheeraj Vaidh from wallstreetmojo.com. This is part 22 of our ratio analysis video series. And in this installment, we learn all about return on total equity. In simple terms, return on total equity is a profitability matrix that is used to compare the profits earned by the business to the value of its total shareholders equity. Total shareholders equity actually includes both the owner's equity as well as the minority interest. So in this tutorial, we basically have four things to focus upon. Number one, understand what return on total equity actually means. Number two, its formulas and calculations. Number three, calculate return on total equity of Colgate. And number four, its interpretations and its use. But before we jump into the tutorial, a quick reminder. We will be needing all the working files of Colgate case study for this video. So if you haven't downloaded it yet, please do so from the link in the description box below. And also, to keep yourself updated with the investment banking and core finance topics, please do subscribe to our channel, Wall Street Mojo. So let's get started. What is return on total equity? Return on total equity is a part of the ratio analysis framework and it comes under the operating profitability category. What we understand by return on total equity is that uh, how much the company is generating in terms of net profit or net income on its total equity. So say for example, if the return on equity of a company is let's say 15%, what does that mean? It simply means that the company is generating $15 of net profit out of the investment of $100 of shareholders equity. So 15% as ROE or the return on total equity. Now, the uh, important thing to note here is that we are talking about the total equity and not the owner's equity. Okay, There's a difference between the two. Uh, we'll come to return on owner's equity in the next video. But here, let me define what total equity could mean here. So what happens, you know, when you are looking at a consolidated balance sheet. The shareholders equity or the total shareholders equity comprises of two types of equity. One they will call it as shareholders equity and the other one is called as minority interest. Okay. Or this is also called as non-controlling interest. Okay. So when we when we look at the total shareholders equity, we have to consider both. Okay. Not only the shareholders from the company but also the minority shareholders you know so that both the item needs to be included uh, we'll be doing this example uh, in colgate because colgate does have this kind of a setup where uh, they do have this non controlling interest so we'll look at you know how it is uh, calculated in that context but let's say for uh, example's sake let's assume a very simple one and uh, uh, here is the formula first uh, return on equity is basically net income divided by your shareholders equity so here what the shareholders equity would mean is we'll be taking the average of the shareholders equity like in all the uh, ratios that we have done until now if it's a balance sheet item we take the average of the numbers shareholders equity at the start and shareholders equity at the end and we do the average because we know that balance sheet items are at a single snapshot and taking the average smoothens out the numbers and therefore you know the ratios come out to be much better for the interpretations purposes okay so we'll take the average of the total shareholders equity and in the numerator we'll take the net income okay so let's now uh, do a quick calculation and look at how return on total equity is calculated for a hypothetical example let us now take a hypothetical example to calculate return on total equity so let's assume there's a company whose net income is uh, let's say hundred dollars and uh, shareholders equity at the start is let's say 200 200 and uh, at the start is 200 and at the end it is let's say 500 okay so as I said, the shareholders equity numbers has to be the average of the two. So let's take the average. Average shareholders equity would be 500 and 200, the average of the two. That comes out to be 350. So the return on total assets, total equity 
this is equal to 200, 100 divided by 350 that comes out to be 28.57 percent so uh, how good or bad this is obviously we will have to compare this with the industry to um, understand whether they are above the industry peers or below the industry peers okay uh, so, just to give you a perspective of some of the return on equity numbers from uh, the other industries is like say for example retail. Retail has a return on equity of around 35%. So, it's pretty high for uh, a retail sector. So, those companies which are generating let's say 28% and operate in a retail sector, they are actually below the peers. Okay, But let's say if we talk about uh, capital goods. Okay? capital goods generate around 18% of return on equity. So that's the uh, ballpark number. It would be 18 to 20%. But let's assume if this company was in the capital goods sector, then obviously this was much above the 18% as a benchmark. So this would have been really good number to look at. Likewise, if you look at other industries like financials, the average return on equity in that sector is around 10%. Another example could be uh, utilities. They have even a lower uh, return on equity number that comes out to be around 8%. So these are just average numbers out of US based companies. So uh, these numbers may change depending on the specific company if you have picked. So um, let's now discuss uh, you know, how uh, the calculation of return on total equity happens in Colgate. And that's where we will get to know more about uh, the inclusion of minority interest to the non-controlling uh, interest as such to calculate the return on total equity. So here is the balance sheet of Colgate and let's now scroll down where we will uh, calculate the return on total equity. This is row number 130. So return on total equity as we have learned is defined as net income divided by your total shareholders equity. So let's start linking. So this is equal to, I'll start with 2017 because of obvious reasons that I want to calculate the average of the total equity in the denominator. And since for calculating total average equity, I need 2016 numbers as well, right? For 2017, I'll be using 16 and 17. But I cannot start from 2016 because for that, I'll be needing 2015 data as well. But I don't have it right now. So I'll start with 2017 from here. So here we'll, in the numerator is the net income. So let's take that. So here is the net income. So if you look at uh, Colgate's uh, income statement very closely, you'll find there are two types of net incomes which are given here. One is the net income including the non-controlling interests and one which removes the net income attributable to non-controlling interests. Here we are talking about the total equity, right, which includes the non-controlling interest. So that's why we'll be considering this as the denominator, okay, and not this one. Like 2024 is after deducting the net income that was attributable to the non-controlling interest or the minority interest. So we'll be considering only the, this part of it, 2174. So let's go back to the balance sheet. 2174 divided by let's go back to the balance sheet and now calculate the average of the total shareholders equity so here is the average total shareholders equity now look at the shareholders equity as well closely okay row number 44 and row number 46 row number 46 includes the non-controlling interests okay so we want to include the non-controlling interest right because we are saying that it is return on total equity. So we will be considering these two line items. We won't be considering these two because this doesn't include non-controlling interest. Non-controlling interest when included becomes 17 and 243 for the respective two years, 2016 and 17. Okay. So that's the main difference. That's why we say return on total equity in this context. So let's press enter. What we get is a very high number. 1672.3%. Let's copy and paste across uh, the years to see the trend. So we see that it, it's a very, very high number return on total equity. And uh, uh, if you look at the total equity as such, you'll realize why this is so. 
this denominator is very very small this has a very small base and uh, it's coming primarily because of the fact that the company has a buyback policy in place they are continuously buying back their stocks and it leads to this uh, negative uh, i mean the treasury stocks increase in treasury stocks and this is reducing the total shareholders equity every year so because of that it has turned negative also in one of the years uh, the total shareholders equity but uh, this number is very very low so you actually cannot make much sense from the return on total equity number from colgate and uh, even if you do its comparisons with respect to procter and gambles can't really uh, deduct much from this however just for the sake of uh, comparison i'll just tell you what procter and gambles uh, return on total equity is around i think it's at around 28.5% so comparing 344.8% with 28.5% will not make sense because of the obvious reasons that shareholders equity of colgate is very very small because of their buyback policy so actually they are not comparable at all i hope you found this video to be useful please do like and share and if you have any feedback or want to suggest a topic for any future video then you may do so by writing about it in the comment section Also we come up with very interesting videos on investment banking and core finance topics regularly so if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet then please do so by clicking on the subscribe button below so that you can get the notification about our latest videos as soon as we release one i hope you enjoyed the video have a nice day thank you